physical detail? I am now. Uh, I can have another thing. Hi, and welcome to our third PEARS event of the year. It gives me really great pleasure to host our first Scottish guest that we've probably ever had since the society started way back in 2012. Our guest is one of the famous Glasgow girls who I've always looked up to since I've seen their first documentary. She's first on the Glasgow constituency list with the Scottish National Party aiming to make history as the first refugee asylum seeker to be elected to public office. So it gives me great pleasure to well, virtually welcome to you, Rosa. So Rosa, take it away. What is What brought you into politics first off? Oh, you're mute, Rosa, you're muted. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I should have known this by mm. now. Um, sorry about that. First, I would like to say thank you for inviting me. Um, I am on top of the Glasgow list um, and uh, it's a great opportunity as a um, former uh, refugee. Um, I wasn't born in Scotland, but Scotland is my home and I've built a life here, I've studied in Glasgow. Um, so really it's just, um, you know, I think uh, it will be a great story for the world um, if I'm elected uh, to the Scottish Parliament um, because I do have unique experience uh, as an individual um, who've um, fought the immigration system since I was very young as a child and very well known as one of the Glasgow girls. Um, so yeah, I, I have been an activist for a long, long time. It's not just like I am running for public office because I want to be a politician. Um, I have been campaigning for positive change all my life and for the people really uh, trying to improve society. And that's something that I'm keen on doing if I get elected. So you work for Chris Stevens, don't you, who is the Glasgow South West MP? MP? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so what is it like working in um in a like in a public office dealing with because I noticed you deal with immigration cases. Mm -hmm. So what is that like? Obviously, having gone through the immigration system yourself and seen it from one side and now on the other side dealing with immigration yeah. cases yeah I mean it is strange in a way <laughs> because I used to be an asylum seeker and when I was young I did approach my local MP um, and unfortunately I had a really bad MP and um, uh, it was a labor MP at the time and um, uh, yeah, I approached him asking, you know, to help me with my case. Um, I mean, to a certain point, you know, in Scotland, you cannot make any decisions in relation to immigration because it's a reserved matter to the UK Parliament. So it's kind of uh, interesting because I now work for an MP and I help asylum seekers every day on a daily basis. I, I write them support letters. I contact the home office on their behalf and deal with their issues. So, I, I have to say, I'm very passionate about it. Um, <laughs> and every case that comes through, right? Um, I feel very um, involved in the case. <laughs> so, but I think it's good sometimes when you're passionate about uh, cases and caseworkers should be passionate about every cases. Um, and I think that's a good quality to have working for an MP uh, office. And I also speak different languages. So sometimes it comes handy um, to have um, someone like me can speak Kurdish or Arabic and I can help 
uh, people who have just settled here for a short time uh, or claimed asylum seeker for only like three months and their English is not very good. So yeah, it comes handy. So going back to the Glasgow Girls story, not many people will know what it is, what the story is about. So in your own words, can you tell uh -huh. us what it is, what it actually is about? I know what it's about because I've seen documentaries. I've seen the drama that was yeah. on, I think it was on BBC Three that had the guy from Billy Elliot that had Kirsty Steele in it. So can uh -huh. you tell us more about the story in your own words? Yeah, I mean, uh, the Glasgow Girl story is a true story um, about seven um, lasties in Drum Chapel High School campaigning for the rights of uh, the, you know, the rights of asylum seeker children. Because we were uh, only a child at the time, we were 15 years old. Um, one day we are in our English class and uh, one of our friend Agnesa, she's um, downrated and uh, detained by immigration officials at, uh, taken from Glasgow to the Gable Detention Centre. And I think it's a very terrifying story. Um, you hear um, stories like you hear that you're like, oh, your friend is just being snatched from Glasgow. Um, and really, we just feel like it was really unjust the way um, they treated our friend. And really, is, uh, yeah, how they treated asylum seekers. And uh, if many people don't know down rates is basically they come to your home in the early morning and, uh, you know, um, handcuff you for something that you're not even a criminal you know like only criminal people will be handcuffed um so Agnes's family were uh, dad and brother were handcuffed um and taken in a really brutal way um to a detention center um so yeah that's kind of how the story started and um we in the Glasgow girls, we said, no, we can't just stay silent. We have to fight for our friend. Um, so we campaigned with petitions from the school um, to, we've, we've taken it higher as to the, uh, the first minister. Um, so we met the first minister at the time and challenged him saying like, why, what can you do for us? Um, like this is uh, inhumane. Um, the way uh, the immigration system is treating um, asylum seeker children. So, I mean, the, the first minister at the time was listening to us and our calls saying that he will try everything um, and nothing happened until um, like we were just continue campaigning. Um, and we became so loud that the like the journalists, everybody wanted to talk to us. So yeah, we were everywhere. The Glasgow girls in every newspapers, like campaigning about this, and the um, opposition parties, like cross parties, were all like supporting our cause and asking uh, the first minister, "What are you gonna do about this?" So it became like a really hot topic in 2005 and six. Um, and we also won the year politician award in 2005. So it was a really big campaign. Um, and we managed to highlight the issue. Um, we managed to include um, asylum seeker children and the United Nations Charter of the Right of the Child. Um, and also many families received amnesty uh, who have been in this country for uh, four or five years. Um, but that came on later on, which took another uh, three, four years after our campaign. But I think the Glasgow girls had a huge effect on the UK immigration system. And um, I think uh, cross-party politicians in the UK parliament uh, we're talking about the Glasgow girls. Um, so I know liberals, labors, 
different across parties they were speaking in the house of commons about the glasgow girls uh, campaign and how asylum seekers should be treated so i think you know in a way it had its own effect um, and made a positive change in society and um, so yeah then at the end we managed to get our friend back agnesa so i think that was our you know um the most um great feeling that we had when we won and Agnesa came back to Glasgow and uh, we had a party for her um yeah it was just an amazing feeling and you know that kind of feeling that satisfaction that you won something you you like your friend was not deported uh back to her home country so I've got um, a friend on my course who's from Kosovo. So what are you guys all doing now? Also, you're working in yeah. politics. What are all the what are the rest of the Glasgow uh -huh. girls doing mm -hmm. now? Are they all in similar fields of work, like oh. influential fields of work? Yeah, I mean, I think the Glasgow girls inspired uh, all of us individually, um, like what kind of career path we will take. And um, like some of us were inspired by the work of like filming industry. So um, Emma works for uh, the BBC um, and um, yeah, Amal works for um, people with mental health issues in the community. Um, Agnesa works for uh, carers, like for the older people. Um, so yeah, I mean, and that kind of in a way is like, um, have influenced us individually what we do. Um, of course, some of us have taken just family life. Evelina um, actually lives in London. She's the only one that doesn't live in, in Glasgow. And <laughs> um, she, she chose like family life and uh, she has I think she has a few children now <laughs> um, so it's kind of nice but we're all like kept in touch um, and I think that's what um, it's nice that we know what everyone is doing everyone is safe and um, yeah we've kind of developed through the Glasgow Girls um, uh, story and it's, it's inspired us in, in individual ways um, but I think I was the only one maybe took the political <laughs> route. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing <laughs> um, or a bad thing. I will say, I think it is, because looking at your Wikipedia page, you also um, were involved in the NUS like I am now, because um, you, you were involved in international stuff with the NUS. Yeah. So what, what sort of stuff did you do with them? That, um, yeah that you've I taken did. inspiration from yeah sorry um yeah i i was the like the post study work visa i worked on that um when i was involved in the student movement and how international students uh should come here and um uh study and have the opportunity to work um so yeah i've done a few things uh, internationally and um, I also stood for the international uh, student officer. <laughs> um, unfortunately, I didn't get elected. Um, but there was like I I I am um, I was like oh I can stand I'm still international. <laughs> um, and um, I think that was interesting. But I also went on the trustee board of NUS UK. Uh, I was elected onto the trustee board. It's very interesting. I uh, went to London um, for the meetings from Glasgow and um, I was involved in kind of making sure that um, Scotland is represented uh, further in the student movement. Um, so yeah, I, I was involved with that and um, yeah, I was involved in Black History Month. Um, yeah post-study work visa i don't remember all the things i was involved in but there was values of campaigns <laughs> oh, oh i know there's loads of campaigns going on because i'm doing loads right now because i'm also involved with the nus but moving on going back to your own story why the smp yeah i think um like you have to live in scotland to understand um the kind of that political choice 
um, because for us in, in Scotland, we feel like we've been dragged down by Westminster. We feel like all the decision has not been made uh, by the Scottish people. Um, and we want to really just have that choice of making a decision ourselves and through independence. Um, I have fought all my life um, for a better immigration system and it's not being achieved um, through our current system. And to be honest with you, I'm really fed up campaigning and kind of things is not actually improving. Um, like we see people are being destitute, asylum seekers still have no right to work in this country. Um, and they receive 35 pound a week they have no access to public resource, um, like the resource of public funds. You know, during the pandemic, it's been so hard for people. They have no access to any benefits. They can work, they can't do anything. They're destitute, really. Um, so it's been very, very difficult. If it wasn't for uh, good charities to help people uh, when they are in hardship, then these people would not survive um really um so it's just not that it's also with benefits there's a lot of issues and scotland wants to make these decision uh through independence we can achieve um you know we can make our own decision in scotland and i think that's why i joined uh, the independence and i became passionate after the referendum in 2014. so I think the hot topic is a second referendum. Mm -hmm. Do you believe there is going to be a second referendum? And if so, mm -hmm. which way would you, do you think it's going to go? And which way do you want it to go? Well, of course I want independence. <laughs> <laughs> um, I wouldn't join a party if I didn't want an independence. Um, and there will be a referendum, definitely. Um, but it's just when we're going to have the referendum and when is the best time to have it. Because so much has changed. Um, you know, we were promised that we we're going to stay in Europe. Um, that has been taken away from us. Um, there's been a pandemic. Uh, um, there's so much has changed since the first referendum. And I think there, there should be a, a chance for the Scottish people to make that decision again. And yeah, I think first we have to recover from the pandemic. Um, and I think that's very crucial. Uh, people's lives has been affected. Um, business has been affected. And, and that's what Nicola Sturgeon has said. We are going to recover from the pandemic. And after that, We'll, we'll, we'll have a referendum, but hopefully we'll have a majority. And that's the thing that I'm campaigning for right now. If we don't have that majority, it's very hard, you know, to have the legitimacy to ask for a referendum. Uh, so we're hoping that we, we, we achieve a majority in this, in, in this uh, election coming. And so we have that legitimacy uh, to bring forward another referendum, which we had in 2011. Um, and that's why we, we brought a referendum forward in 2014. So that's my hope. <laughs> the other hot topic that a lot of my colleagues on my course have been discussing, mm -hmm. as much as we hate the person, mm -hmm. is Alex Salmond and the fact that he set up another pro independence party mm -hmm. are you worried that's going to split the independence vote similar to what happened in the european parliamentary elections with like the lib dems labor and change uk whatever they were called are you worried about that to be honest with you i'm not interested in his party um because his party is only bringing division um and it's actually not making the case stronger for independence he might think it he is doing the right thing but he is not and he's actually dividing the pro-independence vote um and the, the only thing that you know i'm 100 percent sure of is that boris johnson is terrified of the SNP majority and the only way 
to have a referendum in Scotland is to have an SNP majority. You know, that is the fact and the people will see that and I hope, I'm hopeful that they will support the party. Well, I'd say, as I said, I live in England and I wholeheartedly support the SNP. Thank you. But I'm just reading an article that mm -hmm. came out on Hollywood where you said it's just the, the title is a systematic racism to blame for the lack of diversity in the Scottish Parliament. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, we have, I don't know if the SNP have this, but I know other parties have like all women shortlists or BAME shortlists. Mm -hmm. But do you think this is something that could improve the mm -hmm. lack of diversity in the Scottish yeah. Parliament? Yeah, and that's a really good question, um, Sadi. And I mean, to be honest with you, um, all political parties, no matter where they are, even if it's in England or Scotland, we have a we have work to do, um, to be to represent the diverse communities, and it's very very hard. Like, just look at me. Um, it's very very hard to be elected in a. Uh, to be an MSP or even an MP. And we really have to put uh, equality mechanism in place to make sure we support our society. We support ethnic minority, we support women. We should achieve um, uh, that equality that we want in society. It's, it's, it's nothing that we say, oh, we believe in equality, but then there's no action. There's nothing to implement that. And the SNP has actually done more than any parties. They, they are the first time have put equality mechanism in place. And that's why I'm on top of the list. Otherwise, I would not be on the top of the list. Um, so I think we need to do more um, as all political parties to achieve equality that we want to achieve. And we have to put... Um, measures in place, mechanism in place to help uh, these candidates to come forward. And I think that is the same as being for women, you know, the 50-50 women campaign has been uh, so great. Now we're having more uh, women representation in parliament. It's because of the quotas, it's because of these mechanisms put in place that we have more women. But we have to also have that for equality, like ethnic minorities, also disabled people. Um, and I think we need to uh, have that support there for um, to be more reflective of our society, because there is a struggle and we need to support them. And my next question is going to be a bit of a tough one. Okay. I know when you were vying to be a counsellor, you went up against someone that I know quite well in, in the Labour Party. Mm -hmm. I think you were standing in, was it Glasgow Annie's land? Yeah, it was Coston Hill and Gerskaden. Uh, yeah, you were standing up against Eva Murray. Yeah. Now, how is it going up against someone else who's well known in Scotland? Uh -huh. I mean, to be honest with you, I, I bet Eva Murray, uh, even though I was the third candidate, just to clarify, um, uh, I was the third candidate for the SNP, uh, but when the vote uh, transferred, uh, she got further because I was uh, the third candidate because of my name. It's a really weird election system in the council. Um, so if, if your name is uh, Rosa Sally, it's like by alphabetic order. So if someone is um, like Chris Cunningham was the top of the list because of his name, <laughs> so it, it, it's, it's a very weird system. So because of my name, I was third candidate. Otherwise, if I was, if I had a different name and if I was the first candidate, then I would be elected uh, right now. I would be a councillor. So there is that discrimination, to be honest with you, about the alphabetic, just so you have more information. Um, about the, the system, how it's been uh, um, put that in place and how people get elected. Uh, but Eva Murray was the second candidate for Labour. Um, so yeah, I think I did very well given I was the third candidate for SMP. Um, and um, I'm hoping that um, 
you know, at and that was, you know, I've, I've always lived in Knightswood. The Glasgow Girls campaign started there. Um, the Glasgow Girls lived there. Um, so that's my home, you know, um, and that's why I stood there. But I mean, Eva, it's, she, she's done a lot of great work. I see her work um, as a woman and I support uh, all women. Um, that is very challenging, you know, it's very challenging for women in politics. Um, and then if you have another dimension of having ethnicity in being a woman, it's more difficult. Having disability, women is more difficult. So we get that intersectionality um, and we need to um, like support our people that who are struggling. Um, the support needs to be there. And I think the political parties are realizing this um just now <laughs> into in 2021 they kind of realize there is a problem and um you know disabled candidate ethnic minority candidate and women they need more support um to make sure that they stand to be a candidate um and have the opportunity to be elected to the public office um i think we have a lot of work to do uh, I, I, I really do. And we need um, the current politicians and people who are in power to support this equality mechanism to come forward. So obviously you say um, you've always lived in that constituency, so that's why you're going to stand there talking about women. I mean, obviously Nicola Sturgeon, everybody knows who she is. But do you think she, obviously, as first minister, has had it tough throughout this current, like, last year and a bit? Mm -hmm. And obviously, people look up to people, I don't really should say this because he's a Tory, but we had it in a class today. Um, people look up to people like Boris Johnson and Keir Starmer because they are male. But do you think, like, people like Nicola Sturgeon have it more tough because she's a woman? Mm -hmm. I mean, to answer that question is that, yes, I think women have it tougher. Uh, people judge them more by the clothes they wear. And um, like, I, I, I mean, they like Nicola's been, um, she's been an amazing leader. She's been a strong leader uh, and she's avoided these criticism. And I think that's the best way to go forward um, as a woman and be confident in who you are as a woman. Um, and to answer your question, it is very tough, but um, she's managed to do a great job, um, even though even so some media uh, might be focusing on something else that she said <laughs> instead of what she said instead of um yeah I mean there was like a the, that famous picture of uh Theresa May and Nicola Sturgeon um like um like having a conversation and there's a picture of their legs and <laughs> I was just like what the photographer was actually thinking here <laughs> um so you know you then you just like and then later the newspaper just talking about that image more than what actually they they are saying and um that's very disappointing to be honest with you you know you 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 see that um it shouldn't be that way um i think it's important what our women politicians say uh, because I think women are personally we're intelligent and uh, we're more than capable of what men can do <laughs> in politics I think more maybe uh, and we're passionate as well where women have a really um, caring responsibility and that is something that we've you know that women have the skill to care uh, much more and I think that's a good quality to have in politics I totally agree and, and I know people talk about but my um, mouth the other SNP lead I say the other SNP leader in Westminster Ian Blackford mm -hmm. so what is your um, opinion of him because uh, there has been a lot of controversy mm -hmm. surrounding him and um, his constituency Ross Guy and Locke they are so mm -hmm. what is your opinion on Ian Blackford as a person and as a politician I think he's a great politician personally. 
Um, I think the job might be harder down in England. Um, and like the, you know, because we are opposition party um, and we are not in government and we can make decisions. So I think his job is much harder by what he can say, well, what, what he can do. Um, so maybe, you know, that is kind of um, the hard um, challenge for him. Yeah, I can't, I can't say much about it, to be honest with you, because I actually like Ian. He's a good guy and he comes across very well when he speaks about his views. Um, so, yeah, I don't I don't know about his constituents, though, because I don't live in his constituency. Um, but as a SMP member and, and candidate, I think he's doing a great job. Um, yeah. Obviously, I know... Um... I've got a Scott. I got a Scottish friend on my course in the year above me, and mm -hmm. they were talking to me a couple of days ago um, mm -hmm. about the transition that people make from Westminster to Holyrood. Would you ever consider making that transition in reverse? I know some people have done, but would you Stand ever for consider Westminster? Yes. Would you ever no. do that? I don't know. I don't want to stand in Westminster. Um, I know a lot of people say that I should, but the thing is that I don't want to go to the House of Commons because if I do, I might go crazy. <laughs> it's just, I think it's difficult being in the House of Commons um, because... It, it's like you just hear the Tories speaking and then they just, you know, praising themselves. And you, you just, you, I, I'm, I'm going to get like really angry sitting in the House of Commons. I, I don't think I'll, I'll, be, I'll, 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 I'll be capable of contenting myself, like just managing listening to the Tories. Um, so I think it, it's difficult. And that's why like most politicians might be like the opposition politicians. They, they don't really like want to be in the House of Commons <laughs> listening to the Tories. <laughs> yeah, I think it's, um, I can't remember his name, but I think the constituency is Airdrie. I think he's just resigned from Westminster, hasn't he? And to do... Oh, yeah, Neil Gray. That's, Neil it, Gray. To stand, that's it, to stand for um, Holyrood. Yes, yes. What Do you think he will get elected for Holyrood? Yes, I think he will be, yeah. Uh, Neil Gray will get elected, I'm sure, because he's a really good guy. I actually know him personally. I, I talk to him on Twitter. Um, he's a very, like, genuine person. Uh, and he really cares about his constituency. And I think he wants to represent the constituency in the Scottish Parliament. Um, I know my friend Anna, she's standing to be uh, the candidate for Westminster for SNP there. And um, so, yeah, I think, uh, and she's going to be the first uh, ethnic minority woman to be elected uh, from, well, the SNP. We don't have any uh, one uh, at the moment. So, I think she's she's going to be a great uh, MP for the area. But as I said to you, the problem is for me to be an MP or stand for an MP is difficult because of my history. Um, and if there's going to be like um, like a discussion, say, for example, on immigration or asylum seekers coming through the channels, all these illegal migrants and a pretty patel if i see pretty patel across me i'll be like oh my god like you don't speak for me okay <laughs> and I'll, I'll 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 be very furious um i don't think i can like um i can actually listen to her like i wouldn't be able to do that um yeah no that's that's why i haven't actually put myself forward to be an mp uh, i think it's very very hard um for me I, I suspect Chris Stevens has tried to persuade you, hasn't he? Uh, he has been a great supporter. Um, <laughs> uh, really, he has. He's been, um, like, from a trade union background. I have a trade union background. So we have a lot of similarities. Uh, we care about asylum seeker issues um benefit issues he's on dwp select committee so we he does a lot of great work um uh you know 
he has persuaded me to take the political route um and you know that's why i'm going for the scottish parliament <laughs> and standing for the scottish parliament so we'll see how it goes but i think it's been overall it's been a great experience um sometimes um it's good to stand for things you know that you think that you you might do a good job um, and just have that confidence in yourself and even if you don't get elected, you know, I stood in 2017, I didn't get elected, I'm standing again, we never know what's going to happen. But overall, like the experience of it has been amazing. So if you don't do it, then you'll regret like why you didn't do it. So um, I'm yeah, I'm happy about my choices. <laughs> So obviously you've got you know you've got support from us in England and you've got support from across Scotland. So you. you you'll make history and you'll I'm hoping you'll get recognition get across. for it. Of course you will. Of course you've got the recognition from your party. But the next thing you need is recognition from the royal family. That is what, what you need. What I need what? You need, rec you need recognition from the royal family. Oh my god, did you just that say that? <laughs> Yeah, I, I just said that. You need recognition from the royal family. That is what you deserve. You've uh, done so much work that it's, it's going unrecognised. Obviously, it's been recognised in Scotland, but uh, the royal family, they need to know what. why. Why the royal family needs to know? <laughs> so you can, get, you, can get an, you can get awards and recognition from them. You can get an OBE, you can get an MBE. You can get yeah. something like that from them. That would be the icing on the cake. Yeah. All of your hard, for the group's hard work. Because you had Young Politicians Awards, mm -hmm. you had numerous other things. That would, yeah. for me, would just be the icing on the cake mm -hmm. for you. But what would be your next step once you get to Holyrood? What would you be after in terms of because also you devolve as you say devolved administration so you don't work the same as Westminster so mm -hmm. what are you aiming to change in what Scotland <laughs> <laughs> I know that in England you feel like it's not possible but it's definitely possible 100% um and this is something that I'm passionate about once I'm passionate about something I will not give up fighting for it and um, I think independence would be a really good thing for Scotland and to develop as a country and progress as a country. Um, we will always be friends with England. If that's not like, you know, we will have friends in England or neighbors in England. But basically, we just want to make decisions for ourselves in Scotland and to be a small democratic country um, and the Scottish will is reflected in the Scottish Parliament. Um, so yeah, I'm hoping that um, I can do great work in the Scottish Parliament. I have great ideas. Um, one of the things that I'm interested in is implementing like a working charter um, for workers' rights because we you see that what's happened with the pandemic, workers' rights have taken a step back. Uh, we need to protect a decent uh, living wage um uh working hour conditions and um, so i'm looking forward to doing more work and bringing um positive legislation forward as being very vocal in the parliament really because that's something that i am i'm not afraid of speaking up my mind um so hopefully uh, that will help so if you could change once if you could bring one set of laws or legislation from westminster to holyrood what would it be or if you could change it what would it be immigration <laughs> thought you might say that yes yeah i would bring an immigration system uh, laws and create that fairer uh, dignified system uh, that we all well i have been campaigning all my life for um people should not be waiting many years some people have been waiting eight years for decisions um some people have waited i uh, helped uh, a constituent waited for 20 years um and and that was something like he was old he said i came here in the 1980 something uh, and i was like no sorry nine 1980 something sorry yeah 
in the 90s, I think, 1998 or something like that. Um, I actually forgot, but he was here for 20 years. Um, I think it was 2018 I deal with this case. Um, but yeah, he was like a pensioner, you know? And uh, he, he said that he's been here so many years and I was like, I just like, I opened his case and I was like, oh my God, what's going on here? <laughs> and you know, you just see these cases and you're just like, what's happened? Um, so yeah, I mean, you, you know, the Windrush um, scandal, what happened with the people have been forgotten. Um, and that's with so many asylum seekers cases, it's the same. It's just that you can't highlight it with the Windrush scheme. Um, sorry, to, will ha to help them. Um, and I'm just really like looking forward to creating that fairest society in Scotland. Um, and it, it is going to be hard working through uh, step by step. Uh, but I'm looking forward to that. I 100% I agree because obviously the system's not fair at all. Well, you just answered the not, you just answered my next question without me even saying it. Like, how can you, or how do you work on K on asylum cases mm -hmm. that um, have different sorts of backgrounds using your own knowledge? I think you just answered my question without me even saying obviously you said about Windrush and obviously there's um people coming all, all, all through the Balkans and all, all up through Europe yeah I mean like right now the main issues is the EU citizen scheme and um, so basically that is closed right now so whoever came in January to this country and um, they can no longer stay in this country uh, they cannot work, they cannot, basically you can't do anything. You have to go through the immigration system. <laughs> Welcome to the immigration system, EU citizens. <laughs> it's really horrible. Um, we are trying to improve the immigration system. Now they've added EU citizens into the immigration system. So uh, imagine how much work that would be uh, for um, the home office. Um, so you're adding people from Germany, France, people from throughout Europe coming to here, applying for visitor visa, working visa, student visa, you name it. There will be so many work. Um, they've created this administration work that there is no need for it. Um, we had freedom of movement. They've taken that away from us. Um, so yeah, I mean, uh, Sadi, you, you should you should be supporting independence in Scotland. <laughs> oh, I, I oh, I do. I've been, I've been to. I haven't been to Hollywood, but I've been to. I, I, I'll always call it the Senate in uh, oh. in Wales, and I know um, Clyde. I've met some Clyde AMs. Yeah, and they obviously they are a pro independence party. Mm -hmm. and um obviously they fight they're fighting for independence in wales and i applied for a job with a um yeah. with a think tank in wales that are fighting for independence so i 100 percent see i can see scotland mm -hmm. um becoming independent but the only issue is boris johnson not allowing it mm. yeah that is oh, that I mean is the toughest part I mean, the will of the people is the will of the people. Um, they cannot, like the Tories cannot refuse a referendum. And if they do refuse a referendum, we will be challenging them in the court system. Um, and um, I mean, recently, as I mean, you might know, that the Tories are actually challenging the Scottish government for passing a legislation for children's rights. Uh, into Scots law so um, that is something that we should be very wary of the Tories are challenging the Scottish government on something that is the right of a child um, and it's really concerning really uh, what we see um, yeah um, uh, like that we should all be concerned about what the Tories are doing right now 
was, um, so my last question is you said about the will of the people I'm probably aware of the um united nations declaration of human rights and there's a section in there that talks about the will of the people so my last question to you is because we're coming up to six o'clock yeah. do you believe that by the british government denying scotland the right to a second referendum mm -hmm. it, even though it be in the will of the people that you can scotland can challenge in the courts based on that section of the udhr yeah i mean there's so many routes to challenging um a, a decision that could be refused I'm not a lawyer yet, but I did study law. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and surprisingly, I studied about independence. Um, and that was something that I was very passionate about, about the kind of terms of the international law and how independence can be achieved. Um, and also I have a root because I'm Kurdish originally. So the Kurdish people have a history of like campaigning for independence. Um, so yeah, I mean, internationally, we could challenge the Tories. Um, and of course, uh, the other, you know, European countries that might be supporting Scotland, um, to the uh, for independence, that kind of course. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's a lot of uh, options open uh, for uh, Scotland. Um, yeah, so we'll see how it goes. Um, you know, I, I'm not a leader of the party. <laughs> I'm just getting started to be elected. I'm not even get. Um, I'm not even elected yet. Um, but I think I think it will be a very interesting uh, political time in Scottish politics uh, and UK politics. Um, or even worldwide politics, because independence, if achieved in, in Scotland and um, achieved, will be achieved, but when will be achieved, uh, and it will be very interesting and uh, will be studied by other uh, nations and countries as well. Um, you know, it's the right of the people to uh to make the choice for self-determination so much has changed since the 2014 referendum and really is that it's time for the scottish people having another chance and uh, making that decision it's very simple i i say i 100 agree because like you i'm studying international law this mm -hmm. year and next year and going on to do it in a master's degree so i totally 100 back you up it seems like you're very interested in <laughs> politics. I'm sure yeah. one day you will be working for an MP. Um, I, oh, I already. Or MSP. I, I, you I, can I, come over here. I worked for a Scottish. I worked for a Scottish MP. But she was. She was terrible. I'll. I'll tell you more about that. <laughs> okay. I'll tell you. I'll tell you more about that. But now uh, it's it's five to six. All right. Is, Thank is you very any, much. That's okay. We. If there's anything we can do to um back your campaign or help with your campaign please do let us know yes we're based in england but if there is anything we can do please let us know that's great and good luck with your studies thanks very much thank you so much we appreciate it thank you thank you um,